Hi guys, it's Wendy here from Wendy Wise Beauty. Thanks for stopping by. Today I will be doing a Latafa haul. I have not done a Latafa haul in a long time and Latafa just released five perfumes from their Latafa Pride range of fragrances. I have four plus I have a Niche Emirati fragrance that I have wanted for quite a long time. So this is going to be a very fun and interesting video. Before I continue, for those of you who are here for the first time, do join the family. I would love to have you as a friend and a subscriber on this channel. So please go ahead, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and send me whatever comments you may have, especially if you are using any of the fragrances that I am going to talk about in this video. I am going to start with the fragrance called Kashan. The outer box, it is quite pretty. The inside packaging, it is the normal packaging for the Latafa Pride fragrances. This is what it looks like and uh, the fragrance is inside with the normal uh, Latafa Pride booklet. This is the bottle of Kashan. It's quite different. On here there is a picture of a Kashan and I do believe this is a rug. It's very pretty. This is a haul video, but it is not a first impressions. I have worn all of these fragrances. I have played with them. So I could do this unboxing haul review for you guys. This one, it has a uh, top notes of clary sage, orange, pepper, and then there is cashmeran, ambroxan, uh, raspberry, and the base is musk sandalwood and vetvea. The opening of Kashan, I hope I am saying this right, yeah, Kashan, the opening, it is very fresh and the most pronounced note that I could really sense, enjoy, was most beautiful, it is this sage note. There is a bit of a spicy orange accord, however the sage is what is on display, it is quite prominent. When I smelled this, it did not smell like any other Latafa fragrance that I have. The opening, there is sage, there is a bit of spicy orange. However, when the scent opens, there is already a very nice bit of woodiness. The woody note which comes through the opening, it is not too much, it is not like an oud woody note. It is more of a sweet woody accord. It is very aromatic, beautiful, inviting. When I smelled this, I was so captivated by this fragrance. I have seen reviews where a uh, Kashan it is being classified as Goma. This one to my nose, it is so classy, so beautiful. I do not get any strong Goma accords. I have had this here for about two weeks and by looking at the notes, there is raspberry, but this is about it. The opening is fresh, aromatic, laced with woods. However, as the fragrance unfolds, it becomes a bit more creamy. It is not as fresh. But what is beautiful is that it does not lose this very nice sage um, note. It does not lose the woodiness. It becomes creamy. It becomes a bit more, I wouldn't say dense. It gains a bit more structure. But this wonderful opening notes, they do remain in the perfume. When Kashan is unfolding and it is starting to get more into the base note, the Vetvia appears and 
It is a bit of a fresh Vetvia note, however the fragrance takes on a slight ambery feel, however it is still creamy and the musk enters the blend. A lot of Latafa fragrances, sometimes when I smell them, I say to myself, hmm, did you need this? This one smells a little bit like this one. And you know, you start thinking, had I tested this fragrance, maybe I would not have bought it. When I sniff this, it smelled, the aroma that I got, the sage, this very nice, sweet, woody accord, it reminded me of a very expensive niche fragrance. And definitely this is something I do not have in my collection. I searched around the internet, I could not find any fragrance that this one is inspired by. It is very beautiful guys and definitely if you need to try one of the last, I would say, five fragrances that they released in this uh, Latafa Pride collection and if you are looking for something which is different, not the normal Latafa DNA, this would definitely be one to choose. This one, it fits into any type of environment, occasion, you can dress it up, dress it down and it has very good lasting power. The sillage is good. This is an Eau de Parfum. It's not an extrait, so it's not an explosion. This is a very decent, beautiful, well-formulated fragrance. By the way, I have seen some individuals claiming that these latest fragrances from Latafa are selling for about $75. I have seen them in the price range of 75 euros here on Amazon and on other websites, but that was prior to the fragrances being offered on the Latafa website. This one, it is costing, I believe, $32.99. So on the Latafa website, these fragrances are in the price range of about 32 to, I think, about 39 euros, the normal price for Latafa Pride fragrances. And they are starting to become more and more available here in Europe. This one was love at first sniff and I absolutely love this fragrance because it is so different and it feels, not it feels, I feel so special when I am wearing this. It gives me a little bit of the feeling that I get when I wear Gila exclusive Bois de Amin. But Bois de Amin has a bit of a powdery feel. This is very crisp and clean, beautiful fragrance. The next one that I have, this is the one with the very strange bottle. It's called Atissant Ethnique. It is a Goma fragrance. It is the same packaging. The standard Latafa Pride, exactly the same as the other one. And this is what Atissa or Atissan Ethnic looks like. Honestly, I don't think the motif on here is as beautiful as Kashan, but it is still a beautiful bottle. This one, it is supposedly inspired by Sugar Addict. Sugar Addict, it's a fragrance I have never tried, so I cannot make any comparisons for you, but after trying this fragrance, I don't think I will be buying Sugar Addict because so many people said that this was so close to Sugar Addict. This is definitely Gourmand. This one has top notes of cinnamon, sugar, and rum. The heart note, it is cacao, coffee, caramel, and oak must. To break a bit of all of these sweet notes and sugar notes, 
and it is laid on a bed of tonka bean, cashmere, ran, labdanum and vanilla. My impressions of this fragrance is that it is definitely very sweet, it is a very young fragrance and it fits right into this yummy sweet uh, trend that we have been going through for quite many years. When I smell this, the opening, guys, it really smells very sweet, like sugar. The top notes are supposed to be cinnamon, sugar, and rum. After about, I would say, a minute, two minutes, there is a very light hint of rum, which keeps this from being too cloying. However, I do not sense any of... Uh, the oak moss or any of the you can say cacao notes i tested this for very long full day i mean maybe this is one which needs to macerate so the other notes do come out but at the moment this is simply vanilla and sugar also what i sensed in this uh, perfume when it gets into the heart notes area there is a bit of what i would say is a mothball accord it smells sometimes a bit like a cotton candy but most of the time what i get is mothballs i don't know if it is a mix of the cacao notes and all of the sugary notes but it does not play as cacao it is more of a mothbully accord this is a very i would say linear fragrance pretty much the opening is quite close to the base which is pretty much sugar and uh, vanilla honestly had i bought a sample and tried this i would have never ordered i think this is beautiful maybe for a much younger crowd it is not cloying it is not bad but it is just vanilla and sugar if you are craving a really sweet fragrance this is the one to go for but honestly i think there are so many goma fragrances on the market um it does not have to be this one the next one up this is called peace and love this one has a little bit uh different packaging the outside packaging, it has a scroll on here. I forgot to show this. And this is the inside packaging of Peace and Love. It is the same packaging that Art of Nature One, this one, came in. So this is what it looks like and the fragrance is inside this bottle it's very pretty it's different it is not transparent on the side like the ones for art of nature but you can say it is the same type of bottle the only thing i noticed is when i got mine the finish on the back it was i wouldn't say damaged this i think it is a production error it's not peeling off or anything it's just that the the luck you know the gold coloring of whatever metal was inside it was not finished but the front it looks perfectly fine peace and love it is inspired by Dreves van Norton Swa Malaki this is a fragrance I do have on my wish list for Christmas however I did try to buy these uh, pack of three samples from Drifts van Norton from their website here. Guys, I really wanted to do this comparison and I did not have time to go into town to see if I could just buy it. I put this in my shopping cart. These samples, yeah, I think it's a pack of two. A pack of two 
it's costing uh, 30 euros and then I was like this is fine I can get to test this at home you know in peace and to do the comparison but when I went to check out the shipping was 15 euros and then I said hell no I mean this is being shipped from what I can see from Germany you know inland in Germany where the shipping is normally around four euros and this will most likely come to me in an envelope I do not pay 15 euros for shipping I think max three samples I will most likely go into store this afternoon to see if I can sample it and I will come back and let you guys know how close they are but most reviews that I have seen states that this is inspired by Swamalaki. The notes in Peace and Love they are the top notes are bergamot, almond and black currants. In the heart note you have rose and tuberose and the base is heliotrope sandalwood and vanilla. When I looked at the notes honestly I was expecting a very floral fragrance but this is really more goma than it is floral. Peace and Love it is a bit more complex than the other fragrances I have not, like I said, tried Swamalaki, so I am reviewing this fragrance on its own. The opening, it is beautiful. It is complex, but at the same time, it is quite soothing. It is smooth, it is, I wouldn't call it creamy, but it is a very pleasing opening. There is not any note which bothers me, everything, it just nicely flows and all the notes fall into place. By the way, this one, it's being marketed as an oriental fruity floral and I think, yeah, this is, um, it is classified in the correct category. The opening, it is fresh, it is fruity and the note which is you can say most pronounced, it is the black currant. There is a very nice berry note, however there is this bergamot and the two notes, yeah they balance each other with a bit of time, peace and love it becomes more goma and the fragrance it gains a bit more depth and more structure when it opens it is smooth but it is a bit more you can say a lighter fragrance the opening it is not very goma but with a bit of time the more the fragrance remains on the skin this goma accord starts to appear when the perfume continues to unfold in this very creamy middle there is more almond notes coming out however the floral notes um, they start to appear however it is not a very strong floral middle I was expecting more tuberose and more rose the rose is a bit more pronounced than tuberose this is not at all a real floral fragrance there is a creamy blend in the middle when the almond note does appear it is not in the top the almond really explodes you can say it doesn't explode it becomes more present in the heart note and the almond note it is not um, a powdery almond it is aromatic but it is more of a bitter almond aroma it is very fragrant it is beautiful it adds almost what you would say is a green accord 
to peace and love. There is heliotrope in here and I was debating should I get this because heliotrope is a nerd if I can smell a lot of it. A lot of times it puts me off because heliotrope nauseates me quite easily. I do not get a lot of heliotrope in here. I think this is what adds creaminess, silkiness in the base of peace and love. I love uh, peace and love the best when it is in the dry down phase because it is very silky it is creamy and it is vanilla still with this nice almond note and it is laced with beautiful i wouldn't call it sweet but very nice soft woody accords this is heavenly i would say after about one hour of having it on the skin in terms of gender this is right in the middle I would not say it's pulling in either direction because the tuberose and the rose, they are there, but they are very decent. This has really good lasting power. It does have a bit more projection than Kashan. However, it is not what I would call bismuth. I do like this fragrance very much. I must say it is not what I was expecting. I was expecting something a lot more floral. It is more goma, but it is a nice scent. I do not think this one, it is overdone or there is something else like this in the La Tafa collection. If you came across something, Please let me know, but this one, it is inspired by Swamalaki, but I don't have anything like this from Latafa. In terms of ready to wear, the only one where I could say maybe it's not performing due to maceration, it is this Atisan Ethnic, because a lot of the notes which a listing, I cannot sense it, I get sugar and vanilla. But in terms of Kashan, uh, peace and love, and also this one, Art of Nature One, where I have a full review, I did this last week. This one, it is inspired by Oud Maracuya, all three of these fragrances were ready to wear when I got them. These are the new Letter for Pride fragrances and I do have a new one. This is from Niche Emirati and this one it is called Zerka. This is Zerka and this is what it looks like. It's very pretty. I thought this would probably be metal, but it is glass. I think only this piece is metal. I have wanted Zerka for quite a long time, especially for the bottle, because I like collecting the Niche Emirati bottles. So I finally picked this up and the notes in Zerka, the opening, it's cognac, the heart note, it is cinnamon, tonka bean and oak moss. And it is laid on a bed of praline, vanilla and sandalwood. From all of the inspirations or clones of Angel Share that I have purchased, this one, it is the richest, it is the most decadent. It smells so rich and so expensive. And this is due to the cognac note in the opening of this scent. It is really a rich fragrance cognac aroma. This makes the opening a bit more masculine. However, this perfume, it changes drastically. When I first spray it, it is this very fragrant cognac note. However, as soon as the vanilla enters into this mix, this cognac note, it transforms somehow. It is no longer cognac. It becomes a very 
fragrant and aromatic rum note. This is the only way I can describe this. And when this happens, the perfume, it is not as masculine. It really becomes a bit of a different <laughs> fragrance, really. I like this so much, you know, when this beautiful, rich cognac transforms into, I wouldn't even say rum. It is like an aroma that you smell in the process of rum making. And I know this because when I smelled this scent, it reminded me so much of tours I have done in the rum factory of Dillon in Martinique and when they take you through this tour you can experience this whole process of how they make the rum and when the rum is freshly when it's being boiled before it is distilled there is this very nice aroma of raw sugarcane and a bit of rum which is normally already there and this is a bit of what I smell in this fragrance. This is really what makes uh, Zirka different from Angel Share. Also, as the fragrance unfolds and it starts to settle, I do get a bit of a biscotti note. It is not like sometimes in a lot of the Angel Share clones, when the vanilla mixes in with the cognac in the base of the rum, it can be a bit like cake batter. However, in here, it is more like biscotti. The opening of Zierka, it is very masculine, but by the time this gets to the base, it is pretty much in the middle, maybe leaning a tad bit more masculine because when it gets back into the base after it has been on the skin for a while, some of this nice cognac note, it does come out and also a bit of cinnamon, but it is a lot of vanilla. I would say in terms of uh, angel share, clone inspiration, I would give this one about 60%. The transformation that this fragrance goes through from the opening to the heart note and this biscotti aroma, it does make Zierka very different. I did say I would not buy another Angel Share inspiration, but this one, it was so interesting and it was recommended and I am happy I picked this up because now I can round off all of my uh, Angel Share inspirations and I can finally finish this video. Guys, if you are not saturated <laughs> with fragrance inspirations of Angel Share, this is definitely one to try. It is well formulated. It is, um, it feels expensive to my nose. It smells expensive and it is a bit different. This one, it is, um, you can say, remember I did a review of Enigma 2. This one, it is from uh, French Avenue Fragrance World. It is an inspiration of Angel Share, but due to the nice floral notes, it is so creamy and it is a bit feminine. It makes it different enough from Angel Share that it's worth having. And I think this one, it's the same thing. I do have another fragrance from, which is a clone. This one, I bought it quite a while ago. It is from French Avenue. I think it's called Cocktail Intense. This one, it was not any different than a lot of the other clones. So I was a little bit annoyed when I got it, but I am happy to have this one and the bottle. Like I said, it is a pretty bottle. So this was a good find. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Do you send me some comments should you have any of these fragrances and hope to see you again soon. <laughs>
<laughs> in the next video you know uh i do say see you guys again in the next video because i know you are watching me based on the views or if you send me some comments and a thumbs up and i do appreciate very much the interaction choose